you know, every once in a while, you'll come across, you know, a video or read something in an article or a book or hear something from somebody who seems like they know what they're talking about, you know, as rare as that might be, that is so contradictory to what you have been believing, right? That it just makes you rethink the entire outlook on the 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 subject at hand, right? Flipping this upside down <coughs> apparently makes more power. What? <laughs> Yes, indeedy. Apparently, these things, these taper combo spacers, right? This, you know, new, you know, revolutionary design of spacer technology apparently works better upside down than it does right side up. Now, you know, what, what are you talking about, right? Like, where did you see this at? I'm telling you, I was just scrolling through YouTube, just watching some random YouTube videos, and this channel popped up, right? Well, a video that this channel made popped up. And I watched it because, you know, obviously, right, you know, upside down, what it was. Check this out. Uh, so let's throw the, the tapered combo spacer on there and see what kind of results we got. Just when I thought the taper combo was going to be the one, uh, to my surprise, it did almost exactly the same thing as the open spacer, except it picked up a little bit more torque at the top end. So, so I went out to the dyno cell and I decided, let's try to flip the taper combo. So it has this radius sort of thing going down into the dual plane intake. Let's, let's see what kind of results that gives. Our tapered combo spacer flipped upside down with the center point pointing towards the, car the carburetor and the four holes down towards the dual plane intake was the magic ticket for this combination. We end up picking up power where we lost power before and underneath where we would normally lose a lot of power with an open spacer we did not see that drop. So what exactly did we see there, right? Well, essentially what we saw was, in his own words, you know, by dino graphs and whatever else he showed there, by his own testing, when he compared the taper combo spacer to an open spacer, it basically did the same thing as the open spacer did, just, you know, squeaked out right at the very top, top end. Which, okay, you know, really, if you look at this, it is mostly open spacer. And the only difference is just this little tiny bit right here in the center piece here. Essentially, it's mostly open. So, okay, right, all right, makes sense that it would be pretty much similar to what the open does. And then mysteriously, magically, he tests it flipped upside down so that you know, it, I, I, and it picked up power. I mean, it, it, you know, not by an insignificant amount either. Why? Does that make any sense to you at all? Well, let's look into it. Let's see if we can figure out why. All right, so let's take a look at the spacer itself, the spacer in question here. And what its original thought process was, well, behind its design. Essentially speaking, it is a four-hole spacer, obviously, and an open spacer on the bottom with, you know, smoothness and everything in between, right? Why? Well, it's supposed to give better signal to the carburetor because if you take a base plate which I just happen to have over here. Literally, I did not stage that. I just happen to have this over here. It's actually pretty handy, right? So we take a base plate, right? And you look 
at all that dead space underneath this base plate. All this dead space is just places where turbulence can happen. Airflow is rushing past out of these four holes and air is getting battered in between here and here and everywhere else, right? Because, you know, air gets siphoned out of this area and it has to come back into this area and it's just constantly getting bombarded. So, to get rid of all this turbulent flow right below the butterflies here, we smooth it out, right? We get rid of all that dead space and we make a nice smooth transition for all the air fuel mixture to, well, go into the intake plenum. That is the original design reason here for it. it it's supposed to give better signal to the carburetor because it's reducing all of this turbulent area and it's giving a nice streamlined flow out of the carburetor. So why in the world would it work better upside down where it essentially looks like it's constricting the path of flow rather than aiding it? Well, let's mount it up on the old intake and take a look. Now, it's up on the intake as it is designed to be. And I suppose the biggest thing we can really see Look at that giant divider line, right? That, to me, looks like it would be impeding flow and causing turbulence down there, doesn't it? I mean, especially there in the corners, right? I mean, that that's the only thing. That, that's the only thing we can physically see inside the intake that would make any sense on why it would not be optimal. So... Let's flip it upside down. Now what do we see? Well, again, the only thing I can see that is changing, possibly two things, but one major thing, is it is streamlining that plenum space, right? I mean, obviously you can see it here again because it's, well, you know what, let's just, let's just remove my nitrous plate and custom spacer and all that if I can. All right nitrous plate off. This custom spacer I actually made to streamline the entry from that nitrous plate because the nitrous plate is a lot wider than this opening. Any hoozle. Okay. Now it's not perfect obviously because we still have a little ledge there but you got to admit that looks a whole lot more streamlined than that, right? That's the only thing I can really see that would be causing this. Now, looking at it a different way as well, or, you know, another reason why it could be helping, potentially, is maybe this is having some sort of a Venturi effect, right? The air is coming by, it has to, you know, conform to this whole shape, right? It's going from this big size down to the little sizes, right? Well, whenever air has to, you know, compress into a smaller area, it speeds up, increasing velocity. Now, I don't know how realistic that would be that that would be helping. Uh, possibly, I don't know. Really, you would think the increase in velocity would just be plowing the air fuel mixture onto the bottom of the intake causing you know fuel to pile up and whatever else maybe not maybe that is helping or maybe having this centerpiece here and all this is helping direct the air towards the place it wants to go to it's eliminating this dead spot here right and it's helping the air flow down to where it's supposed to go in the first place, eliminating dead area here, or at least helping it. Hmm. 
Now I'd be curious to see what you guys think on exactly how having the spacer upside down is actually benefiting anything. Because really you would think that it would cause more turbulence than it would solve because it's because the well because I guess it wouldn't here it would be fine there but right on the bottoms here right the bottom is the bottom is flat right so you would think there would be turbulence right here maybe the turbulence right here is actually helping buffer the air fuel away from it into the direction it wants to go in the first place hmm well this is uh this has kind of got me thinking now like what would this do what if you double tapered spacered right that way you had one spacer actually eliminating the dead spots in the carburetor base plate and the other spacer acting basically as a funnel for the intake exactly what would this do right uh i mean you might need to well i mean you know that's two inches that's an inch so that's a three inch spacer be kind of interesting i mean you could get like a oh uh just a just a small half incher for up here and maybe just a inch inch and a half for down here i mean you can adjust the level the size there but i wonder how double tapering it would affect it if it would gain any or if it would be the same or if it'd lose i don't know you know what if you added another bar but this way right quartering the intake what if you did that right you added that bar you put this on okay you ported it you know to match the contours here right and then you came and you opened this area up right here the actual curve right so whatever area you subtracted from here you would be adding back into there so area wise it'd be the same but as far as you know shaping that corner right it might flow better and you would eliminate all this dead area underneath here what if you did that would that improve things not too dissimilar to the old tunnel ram you see that it'd be that exact same principle except i'm never gonna get you back on now am i maybe with one hand possibly ah oh, there you go except doing it there see yeah you know, how would that change things I'd be really curious to find out I'd be really curious to find out if if you made a spacer because you could even potentially make a spacer with that addition right just I mean you know you'd have to match it to the intake that you're putting it on obviously but I wonder how that would affect things if you just added wings out of there and you quartered off the intake. Because clearly, I mean, having this piece here has helped. Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe you have to cut this piece off and just have this center piece here, right? Maybe these pieces are detrimental and the only thing actually helping was the fact that you slimmed smoothed out that centerpiece i don't know i don't know i don't have a dyno i wish i had a dyno because there's a lot of things i'd like to test you know to see if it actually works or not you know like like all this stuff really i mean you know this spacer here the this tapering spacer to go from the nitrous plate to the intake i kind of wonder if that does anything important uh these carburetor mods obviously right we're flow testing this stuff but you know flow numbers are one thing but actual dyno numbers are another it'd be really nice to have you know 
not only flow numbers, but actually see what it does on a real engine on a dyno. Yeah, I mean, even our fancy uh, hidden, our uh, velocity stack there that we hide inside our intake uh, 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 filter, I'd like to see if that does anything on an actual dyno. So, you know, a lot of interesting stuff to think about. So you know what? Cutter's performance. If, uh, if you want, you know, to do any sort of collaboration where I send you stuff to test on your dyno mule there, look, uh, comment below, you know, look me up on, uh, well, comment below, right? I don't have any other way, means to look me up, actually. Oh, email. I have an email on my uh, channel about... It, there's an email there. Yeah, uh, if, uh, if you want to collaborate on stuff, you know, me sending stuff and you throwing it on your dino mule and testing it out to see if it does anything, let me know. But, you know, that, that's it for this video very interesting stuff i'm very curious on why this is the way it is right i mean i i just it's fascinating you wouldn't you would never think that flipping the spacer upside down would actually make a change that much. i mean it's the same damn spacer just orientated differently and you saw how much difference there was in the actual yeah, uh, uh, in the actual graft, right? Gra graft, graph, the dyno, the, the dyno result, right? It's the exact same spacer, yet for some reason, flipped like this, it responded way better. Hmm. Well, I guess I'm going to ponder on this for a while and try to come up with cool ideas. Yeah, I want to figure out what in the world actually happened. That way I can utilize it to my advantage, right? And make something pretty cool. So while I do that, I'll catch you all next time. Yeah. Interesting. Why in the world do you work better upside down? I just don't know. Has to be that metal divider.